Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks on the new Plex Store PX M5M series of MSATA SSDs. Right here I have the 64 gig, 128 gig and 256 gig models. First off, a closer look at the box. Of course, you'll notice these boxes are fairly small. You're essentially just going to get the drive itself, but you got all the drive information on there, uh, as well as some uh, listed specs here on the front. So uh, for sequential reads and writes, you're going to get up to 540 megabytes per second or 160 megabytes per second for the 64 gig. Uh, you'll get 540 and 320 respectively on the 128 and up to 540 and 430 on the 256. And I will be benchmarking the 256 gig model uh, towards the end of this video. Uh, apart from that, uh, input-output operations per second, uh, you also get up to 73,000 uh, for reads and 42,000 for writes, uh, random reads and random writes. Uh, for the, that's for the 64 gig model. For the 128, you'll get up to 80,000 and up to 76,000 respectively for random reads and writes. And then for the 256, uh, you'll get up to 79,000 and up to 77,000 uh, again for random reads and writes. So let me just pop one of these out of here. If you're not familiar with this particular form factor for SSDs, um, they're kind of cool. They're very small. So uh, MSATA is this connector right here. Physically, it is the same as uh, MPCIe or, or uh, Mini PCI Express. Uh, this form factor is typically seen in notebooks, uh, but we're seeing a little bit more frequently in, lap, uh, in desktop computers as well. So uh, if you have a notebook computer, and uh, just to give you a comparison, I have also brought out a 2.5 inch uh, sort of more standard form factor size for an SSD. So that's kind of a side by side comparison of both of them. If you have a laptop, you might have space for a 2.5 inch drive like this, but you might have an MSAT. And if you're, especially if you're getting a newer laptop or something uh, really slim and light like an Ultrabook, uh, you might be looking at an MSAT form factor rather than a 2.5 inch. So the 2.5 inch at the back, you'll notice you'll have serial ATA data and power connectors. The data is the smaller one. Uh, and that's pretty much the same here for MSATA. You'll notice the same amount of pins right there for the data and the power, uh, just a different type of connection. That's pretty much what you get with MSATA. Apart from the connection type, um, and I'll show you this installed as well in just a few moments. Uh, here on the front, you'll notice, of course, another little sticker with uh, some of the specs uh, of the SSD. Here on the back, you'll also see uh, a little bit of uh, cache right there in the form of uh, a little cache uh, package. You also see a couple of the NAND packages that are actually also providing you the storage on the SSD itself. The controller is actually hidden underneath this sticker, and I'm not going to peel it all the way off because there'd be no way to do that properly. Um, but I can tell you that the controller underneath is a Marvel 88SS9187. And uh, the NAND packages that are on here, such as these two right here, are Toshiba 19 nanometer toggle mode MLC NAND packages. Uh, again, this is available in the, the 64 gig, the uh, 128, and the 256 gig varieties. Uh, you get a, a DDR3 cache of 128 megabytes on the 64 gig model, like the one I'm showing here, and that's the uh, cache chip right there at the back. For the 128 gig model, you get a 256 megabyte cache. And for the 256 gig model, you get a 512 megabyte cache. Since I've already sort of opened up a couple of these, I might as well pop another one out. You're going to notice that they essentially look very similar uh, going from one to the other. In fact, if I hold those up side by side, it's really hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, essentially, all you're going to have is uh, more density in the NAND packages uh, here for the uh, higher capacity model. Uh, apart from that, uh, let's see, I already went over the sequential reads and writes. Uh, you do get a three-year warranty from Plex Store for this drive. And uh, next up, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at our test bed. Um, you can see the MSATA drive installed right here, and we're currently testing this with a Core i7-4770K on an MSI uh, Z87GD65 motherboard. And let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. All right, guys, now a look at the benchmarks. So uh, first off, here's my system configuration. I already mentioned uh, the hardware I'm using, the 4770K and everything. I did want to point out with the, the new Intel platform with Z87 and everything, you get six uh, SATA Rev 3 ports. Uh, so I'm guessing MSATA drives are going to be a little bit more popular when it comes to this configuration because you're seeing more uh, desktop boards that have that MSATA connector on them, uh, but that also have the, a six gigabit per second MSATA connector. Um, in the past, I've mostly seen three gigabit per second connectors, uh, or SATA Rev 2 on desktop boards. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at our first test here again. We are testing the 256 gig model. Uh, we'll start off with AS SSD, 
uh, which is a uh, downloadable and pretty simple to use SSD benchmark utility. You can see our total score down here of 913. Sequential read and write performance is listed right here, 475 for sequential reads, 405 megabytes per second for sequential writes. Uh, we can also say, see our 4K 64-thread uh, test right here, which are giving us uh, input-output operations per second scores right here of 75,000 for the reads, 67,000 for the writes. Uh, quite impressive there. And also access time, which is one of the uh, primary features of an SSD, 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 for reads and writes. Very, very nice performance there. Uh, this is the ASSSD compression benchmark uh, over here, and uh, this is going to show you at varying levels of compression if the drive uh, performance is going to change. Uh, since the Marvell controller that's used here does not do on-the-fly compression, we're seeing stable results across the board right there. We also have the copy benchmark. This is uh, simulating some uh, ISO program and gaming performance. You can see all the results right there if you want to compare them to some other copy benchmark uh, SSD tests that I've done in the past. Next up, we have Atto. Right here, and uh, this is a, a test that's used very, very commonly in the, in the industry. Uh, if you see a drive and it's got uh, peak performance listed, often that will be an ATO benchmark run at Q depth of 10. Uh, the peak performance that we saw here at the higher transfer sizes, uh, about 535, 538 megabytes per second. Uh, for the reads, for writes, we got up to 440. Also quite impressive, especially when you consider that uh, we're actually limiting the performance of the Marvell controller on this SSD simply by virtue of the MSATA form factor. They're not able to put as many NAND packages on there. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an eight-channel controller, but it's only actually able to take advantage of uh, two to four of those, depending on the capacity of the SSD that you're testing. Uh, here is the disk speed test from Blackmagic Design. This runs through a bunch of tests. It runs through read and write tests, and it will tell you at different types of uh, video, if it would be an appropriate SSD to use for video editing. You can see green check marks in most of those, except for some of the uh, higher color depth uh, or higher frame rates or higher resolution tests that you can see down there in the lower right. But uh, 410 and 487 megabytes per second, respectively, for writes and reads. Next up, we have Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, this is a very popular test because it's very simple to download and, uh, and use. Uh, this is running in incompressible mode, so this is in zero fill mode. Uh, we hit 502 megabytes per second and 394 megabytes per second for reads and writes. For our 4K tests down here, uh, you can see the 4K tests and the QDepth32 tests. Those are reflected in the input-output operations per second down here at the bottom, which, sorry, are a little small. But you can see 76,000 IOPS and 67,000 IOPS for the random read and random write 4K QDepth32 tests, also quite nice performance-wise. Uh, I also ran that in standard mode, and you're not going to see too much of a difference. You do get a little bit of a boost on the rates uh, when you're using compressible data. And uh, that about wraps it up for the benchmarks. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Plex Store PX M5M series of MSATA SSDs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button right down there. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and we'll see you next time.